Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship here at St. Luke's. I am Pastor Elliot. I'll be leading the service today, and Pastor Arp, who you don't see, will be giving us our message this morning. He's off grabbing some flames so we can light the candles here in just a moment. The things you forget when you don't have acolytes, you know? If you're worshiping with us online this morning or at the Lutheran Haven, we'd like to welcome you as well. Today we continue our sermon series called Sent, and today is Sent to be Faithful. At first glance, this theme might seem to be a mistake, especially as we look at Jesus' words. It seems like maybe the theme ought to be sent to divide, but no, the theme is sent to be faithful. So as we look at the words of Christ in our gospel lesson today, we keep that in mind. Though division may happen, In light of that division, we are called to be faithful, and we look forward to that message today. I think we'll wait for just a moment for the candles to get lit. We'll ring the bell and then have our first hymn.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority alone, I therefore speak to you his words. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, grant that we may gladly hear your word proclaimed among us and follow its directing. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Jeremiah chapter 28, and in this reading, Jeremiah is replying to Hananiah, who is prophesying according to his will, not according to God's will and direction. This does highlight a division between the will of God and the will of man, but it also highlights Jeremiah's faithfulness despite that division. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah, the prophet, in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet hear now this word that I speak in your hearing, and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war 
famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word that when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson this morning is from Romans chapter 7, and here Paul tells us that in Christ we have died to the law. Now we belong to Christ in order that we may bear fruit. Paul writes, Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to honor the person, words, and work of our Lord and Savior as recorded in the Holy Gospel. The Gospel for this morning is the text for today's message. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Christ. Please be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Text for this morning, that rather strange ending to Jesus' instruction to his disciples before he sends them out on their very first mission trip. The harvest is plentiful, a world full of harassed and helpless people, maybe even more so at this particular moment in time. Jesus has a message of hope and restoration. The kingdom of God is near. That's the world put right again through faith in Jesus' birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and his promise coming again in glory. And because we've been called to be sent, it turns out that L-I-V-E-ing that message of the kingdom, living the Jesus adventure, can actually be quite frightening. And last week, Jesus spoke victory over sin and death. He spoke vindication of all of our suffering. He spoke the ultimate value into our lives. We are the priceless sons and daughters of God. And so today, Jesus wraps up the sending of his first followers and us with the promise of life, of of real life, of the life that every one of you here in this room is longing for to those who will faithfully follow him. I want to do two things with you quickly this morning. First of all, I want to discover what exactly does Jesus mean to faithfully follow him And then I want to step back at the end and marvel at this this reward of, of real life that is ours even now in him. So what is this faithful following of Jesus? Well, you know, after his strong words of encouragement last week, have no fear. Fear not. Do not be afraid. Jesus doesn't conclude his lesson to his first disciples with now don't worry be happy everything's gonna be okay this is gonna be so much fun it's all gonna go smoothly and you folks are gonna live happily ever after no quite the contrary Jesus will not send his followers out into this world wearing rose-colored glasses And so he first, very startlingly, says, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Now, now wait. I thought that when Jesus was born, the angels sang peace on earth and goodwill toward men. And that they did. In fact... The peace that Jesus brings is the peace that passes all human understanding. For those who come to believe in Jesus, that the world is put right through faith in him, you then have a right relationship, you have peace with God, and you also then have the basis for right relationships, for peace with one another. You have forgiveness and you have new life. But as one commentator put it, given the condition of the sinful human heart and the unchanging nature of Jesus' message, which continuously calls for repentance and faith, the inevitable result of his coming will be conflict and strife. And he suggested that you might translate these words of Jesus, I came not only so as to bring peace, but even more, a sword. The first lesson we have to learn this morning is that faithful following is peace with God, but it comes in the midst of chaos and conflict. And the sword is simply a word picture. It is, it's a metaphor of that conflict, the intensity of which Jesus is now going to describe. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A person's enemies will be those of his own household. 
Jesus' example of the sword, of the potential conflict that faithful followers will face, is division in the most important and strongest relationships of all. In the culture of the first century, loyalty to family was absolute and non-negotiable. The expectation was that you always put family first, even if that meant you personally had to sacrifice your own needs and your own wants. We still have some of that today, don't we? I mean, family first, above all, I have a very dear friend in Iowa who had to choose to give up a college career when his brother was suddenly killed in a car accident so that he could return home and take over the family farm. So what exactly is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying that faithfully following him requires absolute loyalty to him And that will inevitably create conflict with anyone who would compete for that loyalty. Now, I'm guessing that there are surely some of you here who have experienced that. Perhaps an unbelieving spouse who subtly or overtly works to keep you away from church, away from Bible study, away from spending time in fellowship with other believers. I mean, not necessarily know Jesus at all, just not too much of him. Maybe some growing up experienced unbelieving parents who were very worried when their teenage child or their young adult first heard about Jesus and the Holy Spirit lit the fire of faith in them, perhaps discouraging them from getting too excited. I mean, it's okay to have a little religion, but let's not become fanatics for Pete's sake. Perhaps even forbidding that young person to attend their youth functions or to hang out with the friends who had introduced them to Jesus. It would be really interesting to stop the sermon right now and go around the room and listen to some of the stories of division and conflict that people have experienced. But I need you to understand that it doesn't stop with family conflict. You need to zoom out and consider that anyone who competes for your loyalty to Jesus is going to create conflict for you. So I want you to do this this morning. Ask yourself, what other relational loyalties do you sometimes struggle with? Look, Jesus said a person's enemies will be those of his own households. Now think about that with me. An enemy is someone who wants to destroy you. And destruction in this context is divided loyalty to Jesus. It is imagining that you can somehow have Jesus in your life and then just choose to not talk about him or at least not make a big deal of him in those particular situations where he makes people upset or just uncomfortable. Let me ask it another way. In what relationships is Jesus not welcome or just not thought about? I mean, is it at work or at school that you have to sort of tuck Jesus into your back pocket if you want to fit in? Maybe it's the people that you like to hang out with tailgating at the games if we ever get to do that again. And does Jesus have to sit in the back seat when it comes to your political loyalties? Faithfully following Jesus is going to create conflicts in any relationship that divides your loyalty to him. Okay, okay, pastor, I get it. I need to be careful. I need to keep Jesus in the forefront. But listen, Jesus is not quite ready to move on. He's going to press this home until it hurts. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. 
Now, what does this word worthy actually mean? What does it mean to be worthy of Jesus? Well, you all know it can't possibly mean you're not good enough for Jesus because Jesus is not like the Marines who only takes a few good men and women. In that case, Jesus wouldn't have any followers. No, what it must mean is something more like is not truly my disciple. That is, a sham disciple a pseudo-disciple. You know what these words are? These words are simply the first commandment restated. Remember the first commandment? You shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things all the time. Look, here's the key to unlock what Jesus is saying in this verse. If you do not keep me first, then you cannot truly and rightly love your parents or love your spouse or love your children or love anybody else for that matter. Think, if you make your child the source of your happiness the source of your sense of security. They become the most important thing in your life. Then you are going to either dote on that child, spoil them rotten, because after all, you want them to be happy, don't you? And you want them to like you and think that you are absolutely the best, coolest parent ever on the whole planet. And so you won't effectively discipline them. You will not hold them accountable. And they will become a menace to society. On the other hand, if you become too strict, too controlling, if you demand near perfection from him or her to bolster your own sense of worth and value, look at what a good parent I am doing. After all, that's for their own good too, of course. I mean, you want them to be successful. Oh, and it doesn't make you look too bad either, does it? Now, I want you to take that illustration and translate it into any relationship that demands your loyalty. Faithfully following Jesus is what will actually allow you to truly, rightly, and healthfully be in relationship with others. When Jesus is not first and foremost in your life, you will lose not only Jesus, but you will also lose truly healthy relationships to one another. Faithfully following Jesus will result in conflict over the division of your loyalty. That's the sword. And now Jesus goes on. Whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Now what does it mean to take up the cross? Well, taking up the cross simply means to experience suffering. And not just random suffering from living in a broken world, but specific suffering as a direct result of following Jesus. For his first followers, that included harassment and arrest and beatings and trials and even death. And as I said last week, we know that that still happens in the world and we ought to be aware of where it's happening and pray for our fellow followers who are facing persecution but today in America for the most part it's a lot more subtle than a direct frontal assault look your faith is fine as long as you keep it to yourself It does not belong in the workplace. It does not belong in the discussion of the public square. Your Jesus does not belong in decisions about profit margins. Your Jesus does not belong in the discussion about what's actually right and wrong in our culture. I was listening to a pastor talk about an actress who was a member of his congregation and and she was struggling as to how actually her faith should affect her decision on the roles that she was willing to pay and play and might she actually have to turn some roles down. When you might have to walk from away from a deal that required a little bit of dishonesty for the sake of profits. 
when you might have to risk telling your peers that no, you can't join them at that particular club. Faithfully following Jesus will not only bring conflict into some of your relationships, it will also bring suffering because it's going to require sacrifices to be made. So how are you doing? <laughs> how has your faithful following of Jesus scorecard look for the week? Anybody out there batting a thousand? Anybody get a home run? Anybody even get a hit? See, the funny thing is that if what you hear Jesus saying leads you to think that you're going to follow him perfectly, you are either going to give up before you ever start Or you will become an unbearable, self-righteous hypocrite who sees only your success and everybody else's failure. Been there, done that. I've given up without even trying. And I've been full of myself more than a time or two. Listen, Satan actually loves to use these words against us. He loves to use these words of Jesus and whisper into our ear, you can never do that. Why even try? I mean, or settle for some watered-down version of following Jesus that isn't following him at all. Satan loves to use these words of Jesus and whisper, wow, pretty good, not too shabby this week if only everybody could be more like you listen this is the Jesus adventure you are called and you are equipped and you are sent to try and to fail so that you can be restored and try again Jesus words this week left me sucking air and trying to catch my breath But I have incredibly good news for you. Jesus is not looking for flawless followers. Jesus is looking for faithful followers. Jesus is looking for faithful followers. And he makes it possible for us to follow faithfully by actually coming into this world himself. And experiencing and doing everything this text says perfectly for us look Jesus own family turned against him Jesus enemies were his own people Jesus heavenly father looked away from him at the cross and abandoned him to death my God my God why have you forsaken me look Jesus literally took up the cross for you So that whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. The point is that we are always in route. We are always on the way. This is an adventure. And it is exhausting. And it is frightening. But you cannot dwell on the potential conflicts and sacrifices and your failures that you will experience along the way. What you have to focus on, and the Holy Spirit is here today to make that possible, you have to focus on the deep satisfaction of knowing God, of seeing Him face to face in Jesus, to know God even as you have been known by Him. Because the more you are filled with Jesus, the more you will come to sense his real presence in your life, his unbounded, unique love for each of us as a -a one-of-a-kind creation in whom he delights. And the more you faithfully follow, the more bold and courageous you will become. You are the one who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame. So that you now have forgiveness and a new life. That's this real life, the life that you have been longing for. Jesus promises that life to those who faithfully follow him. 
repenting and believing, denying yourself and taking up the cross, and stumbling and falling and getting back up again, being forgiven and restored. To those who follow, the promise is incredible. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. In other words, we are sent, but we are not sent alone. Here at the end of his instructions to his followers, Jesus reveals the fact that not only are they with him in that present moment, but he will be with them and with all subsequent followers until the end of the age. And get this, the one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he's a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is my disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. Now, what does all that mean? Well, first of all, I need to put yourself on the receiving end. And I need you to picture in your mind that the prophet, the righteous person, the little one, the disciple, all refer to the same person. It is that person or persons through whom you first came to be a follower of Jesus. Be that your parents or a friend or a pastor or a youth leader. When you first came to believe the reward of life, of real life, the life that you're longing for, became yours. And it is an incredible life of humble boldness here and now. The life that daily, humbly recognizes your own harassed and helpless condition. The life that now boldly clings to Jesus. And this is the life that will never end. Your reward is now and forever. When Jesus returns again to make all things new, you will be there. To live in the new heaven and the new earth and to experience life for the first time the way that God originally designed and intended it. And secondly, it means that you now become a bearer of the reward. You are the prophet. You are the righteous person. You are the little one, the disciple of Jesus, who now bears the message to others. You live the Jesus adventure. You remember how we practice doing that? First, by listening to their harassed helplessness, Then imagining together a God who is working even now to make all things right through faith in Jesus. And then you validate a new positive view of God by engaging and building a relationship with that person that shows them the God that they are looking for in your words, in your attitudes, and in your actions. When you live the Jesus adventure you deliver the reward of life, (laughs) of real life, the life that every human being is looking for, the life that Jesus promises to those who faithfully follow him. Amen. Now the peace that passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in this true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Let's stand and confess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, And he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
As we come now to this time for our offering, we wish to again give you our thanks for your continued offerings during this time of pandemic. They are helping to sustain the ministry not only here, but also our outreach to our community with so many that are hurting at this time. So please take a moment as we listen to some music to contemplate once again how much God cares for you as you prepare your offerings this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, a quick glance at our world tells us that division comes very naturally to us. Yet regardless of our divisions, your call is one that calls all of us to come to you, to receive your grace, a grace that is extended to us freely through the body and blood of your Son. In our weakness, help us to look to you, especially during times of division. Help us to hunger for your word and your sacraments so that we might see and experience the unity of your church, which is bound by your grace and your life alone. Guide us and aid us on our Jesus adventure so that we might live restored lives that proclaim your mercy and grace to those who yearn for the unity that you alone provide by your grace through your Son, Jesus Christ. Merciful Lord, today we ask that you would bring healing to those who are sick or suffering. We lift up Christina Semino, Chandler Espina, Lynn Fonstock, William Falk, Norma Jean Montgomery, Alvin Sabanash, Annette Wendt, and Earl Wisner. Guide the hands that care for them and bring them healing. Father, also this morning we lift up the family of Billy Rosansky as she makes her transition to you. Blessing. Lord, bless and keep Billy in your grace and bring Billy swiftly to you at your appointed time. We also lift up those who are in need of your comfort and peace as they grieve loss. Be with Tick, Tiffany Walker and her family at the loss of her grandmother and with the family of Reverend Gary Shusky as they grieve the loss of his stepmother, Carol. Bring these families your peace, the peace that binds and strengthens their hearts with your promises of life eternal. Continue to bless and keep those who serve in health care occupations. Give them peace of mind in their work and bless them with a full measure of your wisdom, patience, and strength to continue to provide care to all those entrusted to them. Bless and keep our military personnel, especially those who serve in harm's way far from home. Bless and keep our police, fire, and emergency medical teams and all those who work to keep us safe. And bless, guide, and keep all leaders in every position of government. Give them the wisdom necessary to break down our divisions so that our world might recover and the gospel might advance into all the world. And lastly, Lord, give us wisdom patience, kindness, love, and the self-control to listen and to bear the divisions brought by the gospel. Guide us on our Jesus adventure. Help us to bring the gospel to those who desperately need it and forgive us and restore us when we fail so that many might hear of your faithfulness and the grace that you alone provide for their sins found only in your son, Jesus Christ. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now before I ask you to stand, I would like to give just a couple announcements as we have some changes for communion this morning. Firstly, both pastors and the communion assistants will be having masks and gloves on this morning, so there will be just a moment as we don those before we start. 
we will be doing continuous flow communion in two different stations. And those stations will be starting with the center sections, and then once the center sections are done, we will move to the outside sections. So as you come forward, we appreciate it if you would not touch the rail, but by all means, do not fall. If you need the rail, please use it to steady yourself. It's all right. The bread will be dropped into your hands, so we ask as you come up, cup your hands thusly and try to keep them steady so we don't miss. The wine will be placed on the communion rail for you to pick up. And uh, don't feel rushed. Take a moment, face the altar as you partake of Christ's body and blood this morning. If you're in the front pew here this morning, know that you will be communed, but communed last at the end. And... Uh, Today, we also might see those who were supposed to be confirmed in May communing with their families this day. They will be properly gone through confirmation here in the fall, but for right now, they might be having their first communion today with their families, and we celebrate that. So, with that being said, please stand. As we enter into this time, after hearing God's word, where we partake of Christ's body and blood, we ask that you take a moment to prepare yourself. On the screens above, and you have a rite of preparation that we encourage you to go through this morning. But if you've never been instructed in the meaning of this meal or having gone through this rite of preparation, you do not feel ready to receive this meal, please know that you are still welcome to come. Just cross your arms like this to receive a blessing. Alternatively, you can most certainly stay in your seats and contemplate that which you hear in the music as we partake. Welcome to the table of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper and in the same manner also, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Well, good morning once again. Just a couple things. Uh, we are continue to do our social distancing, so those in the back pews, you get to leave first today. Those in the front, you're last. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the way that works. Uh, new food or drink is being offered this morning. Again, we ask you to go outside to have those conversations that you would like to have. We encourage you to keep sending in those prayer requests and keep on, uh, an eye on your email for updates. Uh, Pastors Live this week is Monday only because Friday is the observance for uh, Independence Day. So look for Pastors Live on Monday. It'll be my bright shining face so you don't want to miss it. All right. Blessings on your week. Stay safe. <laughs>